Four years ago, the international community made an historic commitment to end AIDS by 2030. They pledged the money needed to defeat a virus 75 million people have contracted, resulting in 33 million deaths. They also acknowledged that the most effective way to do this was to invest in the communities most at risk. So it may come as a surprise to learn that in 2018, only 2% of funding in low and middle income countries reached those communities. That's despite them at the time accounting for 54% of new infections and rising. That doesn't add up. These communities, called key populations, are significantly more at risk from HIV. Bearing the burden of well over half of new infections worldwide. Yet despite this, the proportion of funding going to support these communities, including harm reduction, is minuscule. In 2016, UNAIDS estimated $6.8 billion needed to be invested in key population programs over the next two years, yet only $1.3 billion was delivered. That's a gap of 80%. 54% of new infections equals 2% of funding? You do the math. This gap is reflected by the world's two largest funders. The Global Fund was only able to invest 13% of its HIV funding to low and middle income countries in key population programs. And the US government, just 2%. The world committed to end AIDS by 2030. This is still possible, but only if the figures add up. UNAIDS thinks that requires funders to invest $36 billion in key population programs over the next decade. We mustn't let this historic opportunity slip through our fingers. It's time to end AIDS. It's time to invest in key populations. It's time to do the math.